Hello, my name is Jared and I have autism. My name is Andy, I have autism. Police should have training with autism. I have autism. People who have autism. The police should have more training with people that have disabilities. In Experience Autism, we take officers through a process of discovery. We want them to understand what it feels like to have features of autism, like sensory sensitivity, um, fine motor problems, communication issues, or problems reading nonverbal. And when the officers do these things, they discover for themselves how to help. And they tell us what they could do to accommodate people with autism. So the first activity we do is when officers put post-it notes on their foreheads and we ask them to write their name with a crayon. And most of them can't do a good job with that. Our purpose is to help them understand that autism is a disorder of information processing, but we also want them to step back and realize that things that are easy for most people can be very difficult for someone on the spectrum. And once they sense that difficulty for themselves, they're more patient, they're more empathetic, and they're, they're ready to accommodate that processing difference. We have an activity where the officers have to rephrase things, leaving out certain letters of the alphabet. And that really gives them empathy for the communication difficulties in autism and the fact that some people have low verbal abilities or don't speak. How do you feel, whether you couldn't give an answer or you gave a halting answer? Yes. How do you feel? It's awkward. And awkward. And a little frustrating because you're, mm -hmm. you can't just do it. You have to constantly be thinking about the next thing you're going to do. I thought that gave me an insight. I had training before in autism and knew what it was uh, in, a, in a practical sense. Um, but to actually experience an, an exercise, go through an exercise that, that showed me what it's like to have to struggle with trying to get my thoughts or um, an idea or just a, a sentence to uh, communicate with somebody, but be limited in how I was, how I was you know, communicating, it was, um, it was a good experience. We asked the officers to put on oven mitts and attach paper clips to a card, and they can't do it. They sense the frustration of have, having a simulated fine motor impairment. Then we give them binder clips, and they're highly successful. They're still attaching clips to a card, but we gave them different clips. And that's the moment where they understand what an accommodation is. Many officers think an accommodation means special treatment, but it doesn't. It means helping people be more functional and participate more uh, by changing something in the situation. So uh, it's very revealing to the officers and they dispel that mistaken notion that accommodations are special treatment. They're not special treatment and they're required by law. So we help officers understand how to accommodate people with social communication needs. I thought the practical exercises that we did uh, really gave me an insight on what it's like to have autism. Uh, still a, a bit stunned in a good way uh, as to what the kids go through and their parents as well. What we love to do after Experience Autism is pair up officers with individuals on the spectrum for a Be Safe interactive movie screening. They watch scenes from Be Safe the movie together and then the officers help the youth practice safety skills. Then the officers do activities with the young people to help them learn to be safe. Activities like asking for help, learning to follow instructions with the Officer Simon Says activity, and reenacting a scene where somebody gets detained by the police. We discover that we give officers the opportunity to see the people they serve, to see the full range of the spectrum of the different ways that people communicate and act and some of the self-stimulatory behaviors. It's all present in the room and the police get to see it. They get to see how the parents and we accommodate it during the event. 
It's the willingness to take the time to learn about each other's worlds and to step into it for a little while is really ultimately the most important thing. So one of the activities we do is we show a scene from Be Safe the Movie that talks about police equipment and the boundary for not touching. Because one of the reasons people get in trouble with the police, disability or not, is for reaching toward the police equipment when the police think they're coming for their weapon. So we, what we wanted to do is satisfy the curiosity about the uniform and the duty belt, but set the boundary for not touching. So the police come to the front of the room, one is the model, one is the narrator, they explain all the tools on their duty belt, how they use them, how it helps them do their job, and then the police are the ones that set that boundary. Well, right, so that is a taser, right? So you never want to touch that, but that's another tool that we can use. About maybe 20 minutes into the interactive screening after the officers have got to know the youth they're sitting with, they've heard how they communicate, they've watched them follow instructions, we have a social media break and we extend the invitation to everyone to take selfies and put them up on social media. And it's an amazing moment when you see the room have a collective sigh of relief and the room goes, ah, and everybody relaxes. We first build a little bit of a rapport, but then we have this comfort level and this intimacy that you see in the pictures of people who were strangers who now feel like they're forming a connection and a relationship. And it shows in the picture. So the point of the social media hour and showing that the police are people too, and that they are interacting with the community members that they serve, that's gonna break down those negative associations and build more positive ones. So we love it when we hear success stories about how people have benefited from Be Safe. A young man who was walking on the freeway when he shouldn't have been and he was pulled over by the highway patrol and they had to put handcuffs on him and put him in the back seat of the car because that's a protocol, even if they were just gonna drive him home, which is all they were gonna do. And when he got home, his mom said, how did you stay so calm? And he said, I remembered the scene from Be Safe the movie about the boy who follows instructions from the police and stays calm. So that's what I did. So uh, I've been a police officer now for 15 years and the Be Safe training was, I would venture to say, the most impactful training that I've had. The takeaway I want officers talking about after our day is, I, I like people with autism and I know how to help them. I recognize the signs of autism and I'm not gonna misinterpret it as drugs or alcohol anymore. I know I have practiced communicating with people with autism across the spectrum. I know how to accommodate certain things and I'm willing and able to do it because I already accommodate elderly people or young children or someone who speaks a different language and all those tools in my toolbox, including de-escalation techniques that I already know can help me interact most effectively with people on the spectrum. I think police officers and uh, people with disabilities around the country need to experience this and uh, hopefully that will start to happen. It was really an incredible experience.